Hello everyone, my name is Tyler. Sometimes I go by the name of Plus2 and make games under the name of Plus2 Games. Today I am doing a sort of commentary on a playthrough uh, that I made for my game. I just uh, sort of played the game for a while um, to test things out, see how, you know, see how things are going with the game, see if there's any bugs, um, and just see how the gameplay works for the game. And I figured I would record that and um, do a sort of commentary over. I'm not sure if this could really be considered a devlog, but that's, I think, what I'm going to title this video as. So I'm just starting up the game here. Um, pretty much how the game is going to start uh, in, in the final version, you're going to just start with some basic resources on a single barge or a single platform barge and uh, play from there. So the first thing you can notice, if, you, if you've seen the original devlog, the first thing you notice is a change in the perspective. Uh, so initially the game played as a third person game um, and, and now I've switched it to a first person game, which was always my intention, at least for a long time. When I first created the project in Unreal, I created it as a third person project. Um, and then very early on, I realized that it would play better as a first person game. I just struggled to get it working as a first person game. I str struggled to make that change in the project. And I didn't really want to restart the whole project uh, just to switch the perspective when I knew that I could eventually get it working um, in a first person without having to restart everything. So um, I suppose I should sort of preface this. This this is going to be sort of a, a rambling sort of uh, unscripted devlog here. So, you know, feel free to skip around. Um, and I, I, I am going to do some skipping around in the video itself um, to, to show different aspects of the game. Um, but what I am going to do, or at least what I'm planning on doing, I'm planning on releasing the uncut version of the gameplay as as just gameplay with no commentary over it. I'm going to post it as an unlisted video on my channel, and I will post a link to it in the description. So if you do want to go through and watch the whole um, gameplay, I played for about an hour and a half, um, and I had a few instances where I had to stop in the middle of it because um, things weren't working properly. And I'll talk about that later in the video here, probably. Uh, but yeah, if you want to watch just the completely unedited, uncut, no commentary um, video of the gameplay, it's about an hour and a half, like I said. I'll post a link in the description below. You can go and check that out. And um, and you can um, you know watch that there. So uh, another thing I want to point out while we're at this point here is one of the big changes I made was getting the forest to actually stick to the land. Um, I actually made, I, I've made a lot of changes to the way the forest generates um, since the last devlog. And one of the main ones being um, that the trees actually, you know, generate at the proper height. It's still not perfect. As you could see, some of the, some of the trees were still floating a little bit. They didn't quite match up with the, with the land uh, perfectly, but it's, it's a lot closer to where it needs to be. It's just some minor tweaks to get it working, um, you know, a hundred percent correct. Uh, there's also I, I've had some issues with getting the the jumping to work properly. So the way I'm using the default sort of character movement component um, to control the character character movement in the game with some minor tweaks, and there there's a, there's an option to enable the the character movement component component to uh, maintain the player's velocity when they jump. So if you're on the barge, you're obviously moving with the barge. And when you jump, you should you should move along with that. And if you're on the initial platform, that initial starting platform, that works just fine. But if you get off onto any of the other platforms, or if you're standing on one of the one of the crop plots or any other sort of machine or something, it doesn't work. And I'm not entirely sure why, because those things are moving. But it seems to have some kind of an issue with um, jumping off of um, instant static meshes. And not detecting that it's an it's a moving object. I'm not, I'm not really sure what's going on with that, uh, but so I put a fix in um, that basically takes the player's velocity when you press the jump button and applies it as an impulse force 
when you jump. So where, wherever you're standing, if you're standing on the crop plot, you, you your player itself has a velocity, and the the game will now take that and apply that when you jump, which can cause some weird things. If you notice how when I jump across land, I kind of get a lunge forward, that's because it's applying my already forward moving force. It's applying that velocity when I jump, so it's sort of doubling my speed, essentially. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. I don't like, I don't necessarily like that. I don't hate it necessarily either. Um, I might keep something similar, but it's sort of, it's just a banded solution now um, until I can figure out a better solution for what to do with the barge. But I might keep this sort of lunge style um, in, in the game to some effect. It is it is kind of fun and it does make movement a little bit more fun, but it can make things uh you know a, a a bit weird especially one of the issues i did have with it when i played longer um was if you're on the barge and you have a bigger barge and you're running along the barge and you go to jump on the barge it applies your forward movement as well as the barge's forward movement so you get a huge boost forward and it's really really difficult to control so if you're just trying to like jump across a few crop plots you'll jump and go sailing, you know, 30 crop plots distance down. Um, so it's got some weird side effects like that. Um, but again, I don't, I don't hate the idea. Uh, it just needs some, some tweaks there, I think. So, so here I'm, I'm playing, um, it's, it's fun. It's fun. I, I, I do like playing, um, playing the game for longer stretches of time because it forces you to think about how you would actually play the game like it forces you to think through different strategies for what to do um with the game and and one of them that i've been playing here um sort of in in the early stages of the game one of the most difficult resources to get is your um your compost material that red sort of powder material um in the fourth slot of my hot bar there um it's it's a it's an item that drops from trees rarely it's a very rare drop from trees and i've i've debated on increasing the drop chance from the trees but i don't think that i will because it forces you to think about different ways to play to obtain it so you can craft this compost material um, right now there's a, a crafting material uh, a crafting recipe where you can craft it using any of six of the same plant item basically so i have nine cabbages in my hot bar there um, I can use six of those cabbages to make a compost material. Now, at this point, you can't mix and match those, so I couldn't use, say, three carrots and three cabbages to make it. It has to be six of the same item. I am uh, sort of planning to add a, a composter or something to that effect, um, where you can sort of put in a, a you know a, a hodgepodge of different. Um, crops and and it will make it based off six of whatever so it could be you know one of each of the six different crops and it would be able to make the compost material but that's going to be a, a later game item like the automatic crop plots and the automatic fertilizers and things like that so that's not really something that you have access to in in the beginning um and so it makes you kind of think about how you want to do things differently so when you first start the game I, i'm starting to play with two different crops uh, currently, that's carrots and cabbages, and you can get the other four crops from the different shops. And when I first started playing the game, uh, what I would normally do would be to get sort of a few crops going for each of those types. So I'd plant you two crop plots, and I would plant down one with carrots and one with cabbages. Um, but what I realize as I play it more and I, and, I, and I get more experience with the game is it makes more sense in the early stages to do a bunch of crop plots with the same... Uh, see, I'm just making those compost materials uh, right now. So now I have eight, so I can craft myself a, a, a tree plot, um, which is sort of one of the things that, uh, you know, takes the longest to get started in the beginning. But so what I realize is if you do all of the same crop, you can create more of these compost materials early on so that you can create more crop plots and more tree plots to get yourself creating more, um, more resources on your barge without having to go through and actually buy all of the crop plots and tree plots which can get kind of expensive early on so it, it, it makes some really fun um <clears throat> really fun uh mechanics to think through here so I, i'm collecting in my storage box there i'm collecting all the different crops even though i'm not using them at the moment uh, i'm collecting them so that when i do get to the point of of having the compost material or crop plots to to 
you know, plant all these things, I can get that, you know, diversity going and, and plant a bunch of stuff. And I do, I do get pretty far with this game here. I, I, I did, I had, a, I had a ton of fun. Um, I wasn't really planning on playing for an hour and a half. I was just sort of planning to play for a more extended period of time than just a normal testing for a few minutes that I usually do. But I was just, I, I was having a ton of fun. Um, and I did run into some bugs. Uh, there are some definite issues still. The game is not really at a point where um, you can really easily play for that long at this point in time. Um, there's a decent amount of content to play for that amount of time. I, I wasn't really getting to a point where I was bored. Um, there are some other things I want to do um to to make things more interesting but i wasn't really getting to the point where i was i was bored or didn't have anything that i could be doing you know if there's ever a lull where there's not a whole lot going on you can always run into the forest and collect more more trees for for wooden sticks and you know hopefully compost material so i have that which is um which is quite nice um i, I do have uh, the the hopes of creating more things to do in the river um so kind of what i'm imagining is when when you have your 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 crops growing on your on your platform especially in these early stages um i want the player to be able to explore the river itself as they're you know uh floating down the river and their barge so i want to have things such as um like sunken wreckage from other barges, basically, uh, that you can come across. Okay, sorry about that. My dog lost his mind for a minute there. Um, but yeah, so I want to have other things to do on, on the river itself. So you could come across, uh, you know, sunken, um, uh, you, you know, locations where there's like sunken platforms from other barges that have been on the river. Um, and you can you can use your hammer to harvest, you know, the parts of that so if the, you know there's a sunken barge that has like three or four platforms on it and maybe a crop plot or something like that you can use your hammer to harvest those and add those items to your barge itself and you can even come across some with um you know some automatic uh, automatic crop plots or automatic fertilizers or things like that that are more difficult to get so it can be really quite rewarding to get these things possibly even chests as well um, or storage crates um and you can get you know some resources from it some you know some compost material things like that so it's just stuff to explore on the river itself it's not just leaving to go find trees in the forest which is which is uh, you, know, you know not the worst thing to do it gives you something to do while you're waiting for your crops to grow but i'd like something more interesting to do you know because if if you're to the point where you have a bunch of trees growing and you still need some some beginner items it's not really going to be all that effective to go into the forest just to get some wood if you already have a ton of wood. I'm going to give the player options on what they want to be spending their time on, especially in these early stages. Once you get to the later stages, there's a lot of different building options that you can do that you can use to fill your time. Um, but these early stages, you're really restricted on, on what you can do. So I want to give the player options um, for, uh, for for what they can do. So the 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 spacing of these villages is is a bit odd um it's it's procedurally generated so i have i have two sort of procedural um perlin noise functions running one that's generating the terrain and another that's generating actually now that i think about it, i have a few but what i want to talk about now is i have one that run runs that calculates the height difference in the terrain that actually creates the the fluctuations in the terrain and then i have another one that generates uh that controls when the towns will generate um so it's not always linked to the same um the same perlin noise value there's a difference there that makes it so there's nothing that's going to be repeatable um with with the the, the towns it, it can lead to some some odd situations like that like there were two towns right there that were really quite close to each other, which I think is fine. I don't think that's an issue. Uh, but I did also run into some situations where um, there were long stretches of time with with no towns. Um, and I'm not sure if I want to do anything to prevent that. I think the only thing I could really do would be to make towns occur more frequently, um, which could cause further issues with towns being too close to each other because 
one thing I want to avoid, and I've taken several steps to avoid it um, already, is the ability to sort of cheese the the buying and selling of items. So it, initially I had it so that at a town, you could sell any item to any shop. Um, <clears throat> and if the shop didn't, so there's, there's three different shops. I guess I should talk about that. There's three different shops. There's the basic shop, which sells things like your, your oak seeds, all of your plants and things like that. Um, there's the farm shop that will sell your crop plots, your tree plots, automatic crops, uh, chicken, a, you know, animal stuff, things like that. Um, and then there's your building shop, which sells platforms um, and other components for your barge. And what I had initially was that any shop could would would buy any item from you, but if it didn't sell that item, it would always just buy it at the default price. But what that could lead to is, let's say your your basic shop here, the one that I was just in there, um, let's say it's um, selling pumpkins pumpkins normal price is four dollars per pumpkin uh, but let's say that price that that shop has a discount and they're selling them for two dollars per pumpkin well you could buy a bunch of pumpkins there for two dollars and then go right over to the farm shop and sell all of those that you just bought for four dollars to double your money and then go back and buy you know more more pumpkins, sell more to double your money again. And it was sort of an infinite money sort of workaround. It's not really a glitch. It wasn't working improperly. It just wasn't working how I, you know, would have hoped it to work. Um, so what I did to prevent that initially is, uh, and, and the way that it works right now, is if an item is sold at a shop, it can only be sold to that shop. So the, 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 the basic shop sells your cabbages, your pumpkins, you know, all of your crops. So you can't sell a crop to anything but the basic shop. Um, it, it, it loses its effectiveness if the towns are too close together because the, the price fluctuation for those shops can be different between different towns. So let's say there's one town that will sell you pumpkins for $2 and then there's a town you know, just a few blocks away that is selling pumpkins for $6. You can run back and forth between these two towns if they're close enough. And you can, you know, do the same sort of infinite money glitch um, just with the same shop in two different uh, towns. And <clears throat> if they're too close together, that makes it too easy. There's not really a way to prevent that um, entirely. You know, you, you, you could certainly go to a shop uh, in a town, even if they're, you know, if, even if it takes, you know, 20 minutes to run between the two of them, you could still do that and, and do that infinite money glitch. I don't really think there's any sort of way for me to uh, prevent that from happening. I just want to make it not so easy. So if you want to do that, you would have to run between two different towns in order to do that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's, yeah, I don't, I can't think of any other way to prevent that. Um, so I'm just sort of leaving that in as a possibility. And if that's how you want to play the game, you can certainly do that. Another thing I should speak on is, is how I keep getting back onto the barge from the water. Um, I don't think I really talked about that in the initial one. And it probably looks kind of weird because you just sort of teleport up. Um, <clears throat> the swimming mechanic that I have in the game right now, the way that the character swims is a very basic implementation. Um, it, it, it's just the thing that I set up that just sort of works in a roundabout way it's it's not very good um, and it's not very robust so getting out of the water to get back onto the barge actually is extremely difficult um, so what I have right now is there's just sort of a, a, a box collision detector that's just under the the core the, that initial platform for the barge that if the player overlaps it they just get teleported on top of the barge um, I'm not sure um, how that's going to work out um, as I as I you know develop the game more and um, and and improve on the swimming mechanic more. That may not be necessary, but it may still be necessary to have some type of um, assisted boarding mechanism 
um, for the for the parts. And so you can see right there that it just happened what I was talking about earlier, um, where I was running on the barge and jumped and flung myself flying off the barge. Um, that that was that issue that I was talking about before. It happens a few times in the video, um, but that was a really good example of it. I also have some very very basic sort of user um, uh, control guides. As you can see, the mouse in the middle of the screen there with the sort of right click button and now left click button. Um, it, it sort of helps with controls um, because they, they can get confusing. It's not it's not accurate all the time right now, but it's accurate for the things that matter. Um, so if you're holding a crop in your hand and you're looking at a crop plot, it will tell you you can right click to plant that crop in the crop plot. Um, but you can also still left click to harvest that even if you have a, a crop in your hand. So it's not it's not entirely accurate, um, but it's it's a helpful guide. Um, at the moment um yeah i'm not it's it's also a helpful indicator of if you are actually targeting something because the uh the, the targeting for where you're looking and, and where you're trying to use your item at doesn't extend forever in front of you you know it's like it's like in minecraft when you try to break a block you can only break like four or five blocks in front of you before you can't reach any further it's the same kind of thing and this gives you sort of a, a helpful indicator of if you are close enough to the object you're looking at to interact with it or not so i have uh for the first time you're seeing the 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 animals um in the game right now the only animal that's actually implemented into, into the game is chickens um and as was with most things they're implemented in a very basic way um right now there's just a sort of chicken pen that that you can get that will hold four chickens as you see there and they just stand there and, and, and don't do anything. And then every, <clears throat> I don't know what the time, I can't remember what the time is for it, but every long period of time, like 10 or 15 minutes or something like that, um, the, the coop will generate resources based on how many chickens are in there. So it'll generate, basically the, the idea is to have it generate like an egg for each chicken each day. Um, and they will also generate manure, which you can use to fertilize your um, crop plots or tree plots or automatic crop plots, things like that. Um, so that's sort of the, uh, the, the, the primary use for them. They also generate feathers and things that you can sell. The eggs and feathers don't have any use right now other than just being sold. So it's just, you know, a resource generation um, for an item that can be sold. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm not sure where that that animal mechanic is going to go. I don't know if I want to have it where you can find chickens in the wild or find different animals in the wild and you can capture them, put, your, put them on your barge or if they're only going to be available at the farm shop. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, but this um, is just a very, very basic implementation of the animals themselves um, just so I can get used to uh, you know playing with them and seeing what, what works and what doesn't work. And you can see here, as as you get more items on the barge, um, th there's more things to do to, to keep you occupied with, with harvesting these different things um, and then using your resources to create new items. Um, like I have enough items here, I can make another platform and another tree plot if I wanted to do that. It, 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 the resource generation really does a good job of um, you know, keeping pace, giving the player to always have something to do. Oh, and you can see on the animal plot right there, um, they have sort of a muddied ground underneath them. That means that they have um, they have generated the resources for the day, so I can go and harvest that and get manure, uh, eggs, and feathers from them, which I believe I do here um, in just a minute. And there's actually something I want to talk about here as well. So um, for performance reasons, I set everything to do uh, to operating off of hierarchical instant static meshes within Unreal. Um, and if you don't know what that means, um, it, it basically it loads the item or loads the the the, the mesh um, object once and just sort of copies it into different locations. Um, so you're not calling to the GPU to to load that item each and every time you have it. So if I have a hundred crop plots, it's not loading the crop plot a hundred times to place each one. It's loading it once and placing it a hundred times. Uh, I'm I'm not very good at explaining that, but that's sort of the basics of how that works. <laughs> It does cause a weird issue here, though, um, which I haven't fixed yet. Um, when, when, I go and, when I go and harvest the manure from the chickens, you'll see it right when I use it on the tree plots. You'll see it happen for a 
like a split second where the unfertilized static mesh gets replaced with the fertilized static mesh and there's sort of like a frame of loading that takes place there where the item is actually invisible because you can't see the new one yet um, because it hasn't been loaded it's loading that that static mesh for the first time um, and and it, it it basically disappears for a second so I think it's coming up here in just a second here um, and hopefully you can see it in the recording when it happens so here's the manure item again I haven't replaced the items yet they're all <clears throat> still placeholders um, but you'll see it it's about oh, I almost missed a town here because <laughs> it's not gonna happen just yet I had a friend come over and play the game the first person to ever play the game besides myself um, just to get his input on things and he he gave me a recommendation that is is one of the best recommendations I've gotten for the game which s s sounds like it's going to be like a, a, a really amazing change for the game which I'm really excited to implement um, what he said uh, was that there could be sort of um, I guess like bandit outpost kind of things that you can interact with because there's a whole there's a whole slew of mechanics that I want to add here um, where where you can get items um, like weapons and you know other resources and, and armor and things like that as if you're questing in just any sort of regular RPG type of game um, and then you can be the person that sells those to get the money that'd be like the whole purpose of it <laughs> And he brought up this idea of having um, oh, it doesn't show it in the video. I'm sorry. I paused there because I, I knew I was about to use the manure, um, but it, it didn't. It didn't show it in the video. It didn't. Uh, I, I had the video recording at 30 frames a second to alleviate some workload on my computer, um, but the game was running at you know 60, 70 frames a second, and it it, it didn't catch it. Uh, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, so he, he's saying that, you know, along the river, you can run into, instead of just towns, instead of just friendly towns, you can run into bandit outposts where you can sort of just stay in the middle of the river and ignore them and just sail on past them. Or if you would like, you can, um, you know, move over to approach these, uh, outposts and you can you can fight with them they will attack you and your barge and potentially you know damage your barge and and try to you know kill you as the player i don't know what that would mean um i don't know if you respawn or if it's going to be a hardcore style of game where if you die you die i'm not sure yet um but it just seems like a really interesting mechanic a really interesting way to implement enemies into a game like this i I've I've missed talking about something here. I I don't know how I missed it happening, but you can see um, I put down a a uh, a furnace item um, and some uh, what I'm calling currently uh, what I'm currently calling um, sifting platforms, where it's a platform a normal looking platform on the barge, um, and it's an item that will will sort of it has the mechanic of it's sifting the bottom of the river to uh to harvest resources oh, we might be able to see it here maybe you uh, yes you saw it you could see it perfect that's the issue where it sort of where the the crop plot sort of blinked out of existence for a second when i use the manure item on it that's the issue that i'm talking about and here here we go so this is the these are the uh, there's so much to talk about here um you can see i have raw iron now um, i'm in the furnace the furnace has two input slots. This is going to change all in the future. Um, the left slot is the the item being uh, smelted. The middle slot is the resource you're smelting with, so sticks, logs, or charcoal. Um, and the right slot is the output slot, which I, I haven't set up so you can't put stuff in there. It's not like a regular inventory slot. You can only take things out of it. Um, and so you can take these, um, you know, your your raw iron. Um, or whatever other raw, raw resources I want to add eventually um, that you get from these sifting platforms and you can take those into the forge, spelt them. You can use those to craft things. Right now, the only thing you can craft with them is additional furnaces, but you can also sell them. It's also another way to generate resources to sell at these towns. So that's a new thing that, uh, that's been implemented since the last devlog. 
um, that I keep uh, forgetting to talk about. We're running into another issue here. You can you can sort of start to see the player's face. Oh, it's it's gone now. I, I'm having some issues with the, with the camera um, that I have to fix where um, the 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 first person camera will get sort of out of sync with the character itself, um, and you can start to see the character's face in the camera itself. So. As I said, there are still some issues. Um, it's a very initial implementation of the um, the first person mechanic, but um, it's it's you know something that I'll just you know improve at a later time. I'm not I'm not too concerned about it at this point in time, and it's one of the things that sort of uh, prevents you from playing uh, from really playing to, and enjoying these longer sessions um, at this point in time. Because the longer you play without stopping and reloading the game, um, the the worse the camera ends up getting if it's lacking resources. And I just launched myself off the uh, off the barge there uh, again. So I'm not sure how much more there is to really talk about. Um, I think I've hit most of the main mechanics for the game here. Um, I do play around with some automatic fertilizer and crop pots later on. I think I'll skip forward in the video uh, to show kind of where this play session sort of ended up. Um, and yeah, if you want to see more of the gameplay itself, uh, that will always be an option. Um, uh, that, that will be an option. I'll, I'll, I'll post, like I said, the, the uncut uh, playthrough uh, with no commentary on my, um, on my channel as an unlisted video. So check the description for that so let me go ahead and skip forward a little bit in the video here all right so this is uh almost an hour and a half into the gameplay i've had to stop uh, like save and, and stop and restart the game um several times for camera issues or, or weird bugs that that occurred uh but as you can see uh you know the barge is is much bigger at this point we have lots of different crops growing now um there is a second floor uh, upstairs that has some automatic crop plots. I have some um, these storage boxes here that I'm using uh, to store each individual items, kind of keep things separated um, and things like that. It's um, I, I am still having a, some performance issues, as you can see right now in the top right hand corner. There, we're still right now are running at about 30 to 40 frames a second, uh, which is not great. And I'm about to run into a few different bugs here. I think um, there's still some issues with the automatic fertilizer and crop plots. Um, that I have to work out, but they they do work sort of in 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 a general sense. Um, they do they do function. Uh, they are just quite buggy right now. But yeah, you can see kind of you know how there's a lot more going on as you get to these later stages of the game, um, and you can run into these uh, you know inventory issues with um, you know with having to you know store items so you don't have everything in your in your inventory. Especially if you go through one of these stretches, I think I'm in the middle of a stretch right now where I'm, you know, it's been a long time since I've had a, a city that I, or a, a village that I can sell items to. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of different things to, to manage with that. So this gives you just kind of an idea of, um, you know, what the game can look like at this point with, with more progression in it. Um, there's obviously, like I said, there's a lot more that I want to add, but this is sort of where the, where the late game is at right now. Uh, still have purple tomatoes. That's still a thing. Weird looking cucumbers. That's still a thing. Um, but yeah, and there's there's more. You know, you see we're coming up on a lake here. Um, I want to have different things to interact with, different points of interest in lakes and things like that. Um, so similar to the sunken barges that you can run into on the river itself. You know, maybe I have more of those. Um, you know, in, in, in lakes or just different things you can see in lakes. I don't think I want to have it where you can navigate into the lake. Um, I think the idea would be that you would, as your, as your river rose, uh, runs through a lake or alongside a lake, you would stop your barge, get out and go explore the river that way, or, or go explore the lake that way and leave your barge in the river. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but there's, um, yeah, I guess that's, um, I think all that I really planned on talking about, I didn't really plan on this video being quite as long as it is. I'm not sure how long it's actually going to be when I cut it down, uh, but hopefully, you know, someone found this interesting. Um, I figured I'd do a little bit different here. We have, I'm having some weird inventory bugs. Um, 
right now that are that are being caused by um, some glitches with the uh, automatic crop plots um, that I need to get fixed. So if you see some weird inventory duplicating things, that's what's going on there. Um, and that's sort of why I started stopping this because I started running into more and more bugs um, that was just making the game sort of uh, not really in a playable state. But yeah, I hope you guys found this uh, this sort of longer sort of rambling type video interesting. I'm not going to do this for every devlog. I just thought it would be interesting um, to sort of give a more uh, lengthy overview of the game and the gameplay as it is right now. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, if you watched the whole thing or even parts of it, uh, you get to this point. Um, let me know. Uh, I, I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. Uh, if you have any suggestions, certainly let me know those down in the comments below as well. We're having to, some really, really weird bugs right now um, with the automatic uh, automatic crop plots. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, um, or words of encouragement, let me know down in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next episode. All right, bye.